What's going on guys? I'm back with another tutorial. I'm putting the Project Handball devlog on hold for a second because I know you guys want to see more tutorials. Um, and I want to deliver. I want to deliver what you guys want. I saw, I've saw. i seen a couple of comments and don't worry, those tutorials will be on the way as long as I can actually get the ways I want to make them to work. I'm taking this tutorial in one take. Dude, it's like 10.30 and I want to go to sleep. I'll edit this tomorrow, hopefully. But yeah, basically this tutorial is on how to make a very basic grenade um, using just the explosion system and Roblox and whatnot. So yeah, first thing you're going to want to do is you're, wanting, you're going to want to get your grenade model, which I'll just do that real quick. Basically, uh, you can go on to the uh, toolbox. I recommend it. Um, you know what? This model looks fine. I'll just go through, delete everything besides the handball. Uh, or the not handball jesus man the model i can just go through here delete all of that and now we have a grenade model the so next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a tool and then we're going to want to drag the handle into the tool and yeah now we have a tool so basically um what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of things we're going to add a local script we're going to add a normal script and we're going to add a remote function or not remote function, Jesus, remote event. So basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna code this local script first and I'll get back to you guys. So this script is very, very simple. It's basically just, you define the player, you define the tool, and you define the remote event that we created. We're gonna use the remote event to fire a server with the player's mouse position once the tool is activated. Uh, and this is just get the mouse and then fire the mouse position when the tool is activated. Relatively simple, I know. And now let's get to coding the big script, like the server script in here. So what we're doing here is basically, we're, get, we're once again defining the tool, we're once again defining the handle and then the remote event that we're calling. And then once the remote event that we fired in the local script is received on the server, like a server event is fired, it will get the two parameters that it fired with, which is the player and the mouse position, which we added in the local script. And basically what it's going to do is once it's fired, it will create a grenade, which will basically just clone the handle of the tool, basically just clone the grenade model. It'll make sure the grenade can collide with the uh, base plate or whatever other obstacles you have. And then it's going to create, it's going to put the grenade where the handle's position is. So basically where the tool is, and then it's just going to make the grenade parent workspace. But wait, we're not done, because next we need to make the body velocity. And that's exactly what we do here. So basically we initialize a new body velocity. We set the max force to be just math.huge, which is basically just a very big number. We don't want there to really be a max force. This is just as a safety in case, you know, it goes ballistic. Um, then we actually set the velocity. The grenade will basically go in the direction the character is looking. And then we're also gonna times it by 100. Just this is basically the throw power right here. You can change this number to however far you want the player to throw the grenade. And then we're just setting the body velocity to be parented to the grenade. So it's the grenade that moves. And then what we're doing is we're waiting a tenth of a second. This is just a good time. I actually am going to increase this to 0.15. And then we're going to destroy the body velocity. So the grenade stops moving forward. But that's not it. We need to make an explosion for the grenade. And that's what I'm doing here. So basically we create a new explosion. We, you could change this number here to however strong you want the explosion to be. Like if you want a really big grenade, you can set this number to be even bigger. But I think 50 is a good number. You set the explosion then to the position of where the grenade is. And then we set the position to be the workspace so it can actually like damage the player. And then we destroy the grenade once the explosion goes off. We also make sure the grenade waits three seconds before exploding because we don't want the grenade to just explode immediately when the like player just throws it because if it does then it'll just blow up the player like immediately being after being thrown and we don't want that because that is like dumb and so now we could actually probably test it and it should work i didn't set it to the starter player i'm just realizing oh that's peculiar I forgot to make sure that uh, Ken Collide is just enabled by default on the handle for the grenade. I'm also going to put the grenade in starter pack just to use it easier. And now here we go. We have the grenade in here. We throw it. And then we wait and boom, it pops. See, 
You can throw it. Wait a second. Boom, it pops. And just to test the dam- Or not. Just to test the damage, uh, if I could like- Can I like throw it up in the air and not have it go ballistic on me? As you can see, we die to the grenade once we're- when we're in the explosion's blast radius. And yeah, now you have a functioning grenade. Obviously, if you want to make like a count, that makes- Jesus. If you want to make a count that makes sense so people aren't just like spamming grenades like this, um, you can do that very easily just by doing a little bit of variable stuff like four count equals three local variable. And then when the player respawns, it'll obviously do that. Actually, you know what? I'll do that for you guys. I'll do that for you guys. Just because I'm feeling extra generous today, apparently. So this is basically just a very simple way of keeping an ammo count. Basically, you define a variable up here. Three, let's say, is the ammo amount for the grenade. And then as long as ammo is greater than zero, meaning the player still has grenades, we'll subtract one grenade from the ammo count, and then it'll just do all the stuff. And if the player has zero grenades left, then it won't work. So let's test this just to make sure it works. One, two, three. And see, it won't let me throw another one. I'm very much clicking my mouse. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it won't let me throw another one. And that's it. If I reset my character, it also should allow me to just start it up again. Yeah, one, two, three. And yeah, that's how you can create an ammo counter. Pretty simple. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.